next ending I want to get is Sacrifice Innocence for Power. The hint for this also really didn't help me. So I looked at the full solution, and it's something like... Claudius is hiding something from Gertrude. I'm guessing the amulet that Gertrude has been searching for, but it didn't say specifically. They're hiding something. Follow them. You'll find it. And then on a new timeline, tell that to Gertrude what you found. I'm surprised at the thought that there's something I've missed about Claudius, because I feel like I've seen freaking everything. But apparently if I follow them, I'll find it. Oh, I... I think this might be the event. This is the first event to happen that seemed new. Um, this is right after Hamlet left on the boat on Saturday morning. Here's the dialogue. Guards quarters in which Claudius asks Bernardo to hold on to something private. Claudius, I have a favor to ask of you. Bernardo, and what are you asking me to take care of now? Claudius, this. Bernardo, what is this? I'm ordering you to keep it private. It's something my wife cannot know about. Not yet. Not now. I'll tell her, but in my own time. I fear with the state she's in, this letter would only send her reeling into the abyss. You've threatened me in the past. What makes you believe I have any obligation to be discreet? Because of the love you bear for my wife, I should hope. This would be the end of her. Think on that. And keep this amongst your belongings. Uh. Do your men have a particular habit of snooping in your things? No. They each understand the kind of severe and unrelenting punishment I would levy on them. It's safe here. For now. Huh. That's the Bernardo I know. Good. It's settled then. I'll return to you in time, when I'm ready to show her what's written inside. Okay, that's new, but did that actually do anything? Maybe I need to look in here? This must be Bernardo's things. That was his father's dagger. He died two summers ago. Let me see if I can find what Claudius asked Bernardo to hide. Ah, this must be it. It's a letter. It looks like the seal's been broken. So I can't quite tell whose seal it is, but it's rather elaborate. Now, I remember, before I read this, I remember that we found a letter. Maybe it was song lyrics or something inside of Claudius's chambers. Is this that letter? I mean, it's not lyrics, certainly. I don't know. My dearest Gertrude, I hope this letter finds you in excellent health. Although I have not had the pleasure of your company in some years, I hope you'll remember me fondly, Aunt, as I do you. I write to you with news of your sister, my most beloved Aunt Margaret. Not one month ago, as one of her maids served a meal, the maid happened to drop a glass goblet, causing it to shatter. One of those shattered fragments entered Margaret's foot and caused her to take gravely ill as the wound festered. Her physician recommended the limb be removed, and Margaret, then in good health, bade it be so. Yet on the very morning she was to undergo such a thing, she passed into the arms of God. You will be pleased to hear, I am certain, that the sacrament was administered in advance. May God rest her eternal soul. I know that Margaret would have wanted you by her side in her final moments. Take comfort in the fact that she loved you dearly and spoke of you often in her last few days. Your faithful nephew, Charles. That is definitely not the letter we read, or lyrics that we read in Claudius's chamber before. This is horrible. I'm certain Gertrude must not yet know. What am I to do with this? Quite the information, Gertrude's sister is dead. Now I'm going to go back to the beginning and tell Gertrude this. Here we go. My lady. Your husband has been concealing some information about your sister. She's passed away. <gasps> Margaret? Yes, Margaret. Margaret is... Margaret is dead? 
The king felt it best to keep this information private from you, because of everything you've been through lately. But I didn't feel it was right to hide this. Your husband received a letter describing the situation. It was addressed from her nephew, Charles. Why? Oh my god, in heaven. Margaret is dead. I can hardly believe it. It doesn't feel true. But if it is true, why would he hide this from me? Does he think me so weak that I cannot stand to hear about the well-being of my own family? Ugh. What am I saying? It doesn't matter. She's dead. Margaret is dead. It sounds strange on my lips. One believes there is always time, Ophelia. That's the problem. I thought there'd be time to see her again. And then... My sister was the only one in the whole world who ever understood me. My son, my husbands, my closest friends, none of them knew me as she did. And now the only person who truly grasped the inner workings of my heart is dead. I feel exhausted. My lady. You're going through so many things right now. Sleep if you must. <sighs> sleep. I must sleep. It feels so strange. I spent the last six years trying to find a way to see Margaret. Yet now no manner of travel can ever bring me to her. No letter I write can ever reach her. Thank you for letting me know, Ophelia. But I need to be alone now. Goodbye. Queen Gertrude shatters and will not recover. Queen Gertrude now wants to destroy Queen Gertrude. Oh no. Oh, this... This is how we... Remove Gertrude from the picture earlier. And that's why the ending is about us being in power. What was it? Sacrifice innocence for power or something like that? Gertrude's out of the picture sooner. We get together with Claudius. And then we become their queen. A very, very creepy relationship. Alright, when is this happening? Later. It's happening on the wall. <sighs> I don't think I want to be there for that. I know what happens. Claudius went to mourn in the chapel. I went there with them. Spent some time with them while they slept. And now we've reached the point where we actually do get invited back into Claudius' chambers. My lady, the king requests your presence in his private chambers. He, um, wishes to see you alone and unchaperoned. Visit Claudius' chambers alone. Ugh. Alright. Let's go. Sound pretty chipper there, Ophelia. So, you came. My lord. You beckoned, my lord. I did. Guy's such a fucking creep. Huh. I apologize. I am not good at this. I pray you'll spare your laughter at my expense. Hmm. What is this about? My lady. Would you do the honors of accompanying me for a goblet of wine? Huh. Accompanying you where? Here, I mean. Uh, joining, not accompanying. If you insist, my lord. Please. I insist on nothing. This is merely a request. <laughs> yes, and I accept it. But it's rather cold and dreary in here, isn't it? Hmm. Yes, it is. Dark, too. I used to go to Goethe's chambers for evenings like this. The hearth is quite large in there. As you've no doubt noticed, these chambers have only one furnace, down in my private bedchamber. Your bedchamber is the same way, is it not? I've often insisted my maids bring the bed warmer with hot coals, at least in the winter time. <laughs> so have I. Drat this old multi-castle. My father had such a love for it. 
Sometimes I find the annoyances pile up over the years. Now then. Come. If you don't find it too macabre, let us drink in there. The fire is far warmer. It is pretty extra creepy. Huh. Certainly warmer. I never thought I'd be here. You've not been in my wife's rooms before? That's not what I mean. Uh. I know. You must think it's strange, an old man like me asking for your company. No, not strange, just very creepy. Perhaps you find me odious. Your Highness. It is strange. I'm merely unused to seeing you in this way, I suppose. Ah. It's unlike anything I'd ever imagined, Ophelia. The burden of all this. I never wanted to be king, you know. I just wanted to beat my brother. Just once. He was so perfect. He could do no wrong. In Gertrude's eyes. In my nephew Hamlet's. And then there was me. His foolish little shadow. Well, what a fool am I. I'm a terrible king. I would throw all this away if I could. Hmm. My lord? Why did you invite me here? Uh. Are you certain you want to know? I think so. My lady. I must confess to having suffered some impure thoughts lately. In the last year especially, you have grown lovelier than ever before. Can we just push him in the fire? It's hard not to notice. Certainly all the red-blooded men in Elsinore have. Of course. In her lifetime, my wife occupied the entirety of my world. <laughs> I was always urged to take additional lovers, as all men in my position are. They... They are? What do you... Huh? Is that a thing? Even your father insisted upon it once or twice, but I always found the notion at odds with who I am. A fine, upstanding citizen he is. Uh. I loved Gertrude, and only Gertrude. But now I'm forced to contend with the possibility that, in her absence, I am only human. You were very, very kind to me the other night. You needed help. You were distraught. Yes. But there was something more there, wasn't there? I felt it strongly. I think, or I hope, you did too. And I propose there is now time to explore those feelings further. Enter a sexual relationship with Claudius. Man, I don't want to do this. Okay, here's the thing. Yes, this is going to unlock another ending. But ultimately, I have to choose one ending that I think is best. And I guarantee you, it's not this one. It's not the ending where Gertrude kills herself and we fuck Claudius. So... No. We can't. You flatter me, but I think this has gone on long enough, my lord. I've no interest in pursuing anything like that with you. Ugh. I see. How inappropriate of me. Of course you wouldn't be. I've intruded long enough upon your time and graces. I hope you can forgive my transgression. I'll leave you in peace now. We learn more about Claudius coming undone. So it did advance the lead, huh? Is the lead done? No, not done. I agreed to visit Claudius in his private chambers, and at the end of the night he made it clear in no uncertain terms that he desired to be with me. This is a man I've known since I was a child. 
It's hard to see him as anything other than Hamlet's uncle. But in his offer, there was some implication about the kind of wealth the love of a king can bestow. Yep, I'm fine with leaving that ending unfound and this lead undone. All right, the last ending that I want to try to pursue is Sacrifice Peace for Survival. The hint also wasn't enough for me to go on, so I just spoiled the whole thing. Um, this is the one you get when you keep everybody alive and have Fortinbras arrested. The tricky thing is keeping everybody alive. There's a guide on how to do that. However, there's a piece of, uh, I guess, gossip or hearsay or something that apparently I need to collect before I can actually do all the steps required to get that ending. And it is to wait in the room, um, wait in Gertrude's room where we see the argument between Hamlet and Gertrude and watch Hamlet kill our father. I, I'm pretty sure we've never done that. So I need to do that first. A trick. No. <laughs> What was that? Die, rat. God damn, what a long dagger. Father. Hamlet. So, uh, this is technically a new scene, but I don't really feel like reading it because I don't think we're going to learn anything of interest here. Uh, Hamlet. So, what exactly do we learn? That's not a thing. Polonius' death was an accident. Is that the thing we need? Okay, I'm almost at the ending that the guide told me about. So just to go through the steps that it had me do, by the way, uh, this is from naguide.com. The steps I had to do is, when your father finds you on the landing at the very beginning, first warn him that Hamlet will kill him and then tell him about the poison stash. After that, talk to Hamlet about the missing loot. Then talk to Bernardo and warn him that Hamlet will kill your father and tell him about Fortinbras' hideout, then ask him about the loot. Then go to the docks, tell Laertes that Lady Brit is upset. And then now we're here. At this point, at, at that point, you can just skip forward. I'm here in the morning on Sunday. And unfortunately, two people have died. However, it's the two ones that were on the boat. I, I don't think... I don't know if they died on the boat. I think they died when they got to their destination or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, even though they're dead, this doesn't actually affect the peace here because they weren't actually here. And I don't think anybody actually knows it yet. Nobody's made an announcement or anything like that. As much as I'm sad about it, it doesn't affect things here immediately. So, uh, I don't know if we're going to have to wait until like exactly midnight on Sunday or what, but something's going to happen. Yes. Lady Ophelia. Please come with me. The king's requested everyone gather in the great hall. No need to be alarmed, everyone. Everything's quite under control. He doesn't look confident. Yes. I've ordered you all here for your own protection. Right now, all remaining men, including Bernardo, are fortifying our outer walls against Norway's attacks. As we have Prince Fortinbra now, they have agreed to a temporary truce, but in all likelihood, it shall not last. I've sent word to the nobility to commit themselves to me and send reinforcements post-haste. No matter what, the central tower is strong. It has withstood many an invasion throughout its history. Indeed, it is the only section that remained when Elsinore was last reduced to rubble. What? You mean we're all meant to sequester here? Mm. For the time being, yes. Everyone must remain here. Make yourselves comfortable. If need be, the kitchen is stocked and the fire is stoked. There is an adjacent chamber with servants' quarters as well. It's meager, but sufficient. Denmark will prevail we shan't be here longer than a day if our allies respond as they ought now, now, now. nothing to fear folks I'll be keeping you all safe in the meantime uh. 
How long do you think this will go on, Horatio? Hmm. Hard to say. Now the true war begins. This will not be easily finished. I... I'll be the first to say it, Ophelia. I'm afraid. Of what? Not of death. I've seen battle many a time. But of... the war. Some wars are over swiftly. The fight is won, one side destroys another, and all rebuild. But some wars are wasting wars. When men whittle each other to the bone, refusing to acknowledge a victor, yet failing to force the other to defeat. It's hell on a country. Everyone loses in a wasting war. I... But we have Prince Fortinbra in jail. We could win, couldn't we? If the reinforcements arrive? No. Those, too, will be meager. Claudius was dismissive of the nobility. They'll be hesitant to lend him their men. Some may have outright allied with Fortinbra. And even with the prince in jail, they will not yield to Claudius. Many are quietly praying for a coup and a new election to the throne. But we're still alive. Isn't that what matters? We survived. We lived on. Huh. Aye. Yes. It's certainly a perk. And when the war is over, something will remain, one way or another. Oh. We'll build a new Denmark. We'll raise new walls. We'll patch the holes. <laughs> <laughs> well then. I dare say you are far too chipper at the moment. Where's the wine? Surely there's some in the kitchen, right? If we're all going right into the mouth of hell, might as well be drunk when we arrive. Here, here. Don't wander too far. I could use the Book of Fates to keep this world forever. Sacrifice peace for survival. I found a world where nobody's life was lost. Fortinbras' assault was repelled. For now. But the fires of war cannot be so easily doused. And there we go. All 11 endings have been discovered. Or except in one case, it's been discovered as far as I want to discover it, but I refuse to fuck Claudius, so Claudius, go fuck yourself. I think this is a pretty good place to end it. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we are going to have the hard task of choosing from these 10 endings.